Now time for a member's statement. A member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Today I'm pleased to recognize the accomplishments of Jared Kiso. Jared grew up in Listowel, Ontario. He's now a well-recognized actor. Many of you may know him from playing Don Cherry on The Don Cherry Story. Last week, Jared earned a Canadian Screen Award for his work on 192, a Canadian cop drama. I would like to congratulate him on this win. In his acceptance speech, Jared gave a shout out to his former schools, Listville Central Public School and Listville District Secondary School. That's the sign of a gracious young man, and we in Perth Wellington are so happy to support him. On Thursday, Jared got even more good news. Bell Media's on-demand streaming service has commissioned its first original Canadian series, his comedy show, Letterkenny. Jared will, be, Jared will be featured in the show and will also serve as its creator, executive producer, and co-writer. Again, I would like to offer my sincere congratulations to Jared Kiso on all his excellent work. He's gone from a kid playing hockey in Listowel to an accomplished national actor. I would also like to recognize the entire Kiso family who have helped Jared accomplish his dreams. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I would like to highlight an outstanding woman from my wet writing. Sally Hook is from St. Joseph Island, and everyone knows Sally. A combination of life struggles and her passion for recycling began a most interesting story that is to be part of Canadian history. This is what makes this story great. One person chose to do something. Years ago, she was going through the landfill site looking for items to be removed and recycled. She found nine timber wool skins sewn together into what she thought was a blanket. Many years later, Sally took care of this blanket, thinking that it was a wonderful treasure and she keep it for her own. The, bank, the blanket was recognized as a shaman's robe. The DNA testing on the shaman's robe revealed sweetgrass DNA that could be historically traced back to the wolf clan who once lived on the island 200 years ago. Sally has given the shaman's robe to Fort St. Joseph Museum so that all can enjoy this wonderful piece of Canadian history. But there's more, Mr. Speaker. Sally has also made a tremendous impact in the community by operating the Jocelyn Mall share set. This entire idea came from Sally, from saving items in a box to a beautiful building storage provided by the Jocelyn Township, supported Sally's desire to help residents purchase the items, and the proceeds are donated to the local area food bank, raising over $33,000. Sally's compassion, big heart, and desire is always looking to help those less fortunate. You can find Sally shopping down at the Jocelyn Mall on beautiful St. Joseph Island, giving her time and her energy to building a stronger, healthier community. Thank you, Sally, from me and many in need. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're an angel. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to recognize Sir John A. McDonald Collegiate, a high school in my riding of Scarborough Agent Court, for the leadership in wetland conservation. Partnering with Ducks Unlimited, they have created their Wetland Center of Excellence, providing students the opportunity to engage in conservation efforts in their own backyard. Through the Wetland Center of Excellence, MAC students participate in cleaning up trails, building boardwalks, and identify wildlife. Last spring, they led the first wetland trip for local grade four students, taking them to a variety of educational games and nature walk. Now the students are gearing up to lead their second field trips at the end of April. Ducks Unlimited's visit to Queen's Park last week reminds all of us just how important these programs are in our community. After speaking with the students who participate in these programs, it is very clear, Mr. Speaker, they are knowledgeable on conservation and have become advocates for Ontario's wetlands. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the teacher, Matthew Sheenan, and his students from Sir John A. McDonald Collegiate, as well as the principal, Mr. Terry, uh, Rick Terasak, for their leadership in wetland conservation and, for more importantly, to be great champions of Ontario's wetland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Here for the statements, the member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, I stand in the House today to acknowledge and thank our police officers in Wellington, Halton Hills. Our riding is well served by two exceptional police forces the Wellington OPP and the Halton Regional Police. In addition to keeping our streets safe, both police forces work hard to give back to the communities they serve. Each year, the Wellington OPP organize a fundraiser to support the Guelph Wish Fund for Children, which gives a child facing a serious illness a wish that comes true. 
Our OPP also participate in the Canadian Blood Services Partners for Life program to encourage blood donation. Our Halton Regional Police run an annual Toys for Tots campaign to bring the joy of Christmas to needy children. Over the past four years, they've raised over a million dollars in toys, gift cards, cash, and food donations. The Halton Regional Police also run a children's safety village, which is a miniature town complete with buildings, paved roads, and traffic signals. The village is visited by about 10,000 children per year, teaching them important safety lessons. I want to thank all our police officers in Wellington Halton Hills. And while we're talking about justice, I want to again raise the need for a new courthouse in Halton. The existing courthouse is aging, overcrowded, inadequate, and unsafe. Today I learned that a water leak recently disabled courtroom three, generally used for family court proceedings, causing a great deal of inconvenience and disruption. Again, this underscores how decrepit the existing court facilities have become. I know that the Attorney General is aware of the problem and all Halton area MPPs are supportive. And I urge the Minister of Finance in his upcoming budget to announce the government's approval for a new courthouse for Halton. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The member's statements. The member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, my home city uh, may be best known for its long heritage in steelmaking and sport, but today I rise to welcome the Juno Awards to Hamilton this weekend. This will be the sixth time that Hamilton has hosted the Junos, but the first since 2001. We've had events all week in the build-up to the awards, with concerts taking place at venues large and small across our city. Tomorrow's evening's music crawl is free, and this Friday and Saturday, Juno Fest is better than Outdoor Festival. Juno Fest will feature an incredible 133 artists playing at 17 venues. It's a great weekend to live in Hamilton or come to Hamilton. You ought to know that this year's Junos, Alanis Morissette, will be inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Ontario's true international star. Hamilton's own Arkells will be playing live at the wards. They have been nominated for Group of the Year and Rock Album of the Year. Hamilton has a strong team of nominees at this year's, including Steve Strongman, Diane Panton, Elliot Brood, Blackie, and Rodeo Kings, Caribou, and Daniel Lanois. Good luck to them all. We have a terrific musical community in Hamilton that we're proud of. I hope that my colleagues and other Canadians heading to the Junos this weekend will stay around for a while to enjoy the best that Hamilton has to offer. I know some good tour guides, and if you like the Juno weekend, you'll love the Super Crawl this September. Hamilton is a great city, and if you haven't already been there, there's no better time to visit us than now. Thank you. The member from Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in this house to pay tribute to one of the icons of our community who passed away a few weeks ago. I would like to pay tribute to one of a kind Durham resident who recently passed away. Janice Sita was a longtime Bowmanville resident residence and was perhaps best known as owner of the popular Coronation restaurant. Johnny came from China via Vancouver to, Whit to Whitby more than half a decade ago. He used to tell stories of arriving in Whitby by train. Within a few hours of his arrival there, after a good meal, Johnny found himself working washing dishes at a family-owned restaurant. To learn English, he hired a teacher from the Ontario Ladies College in Whitby. He would practice his English in the, in the alleyway outside where he lived at 5.30 a.m. In, in the morning so he didn't disturb the sleeping family members. Mr. Sita soon made the move to Bowmanville where he opened a restaurant, The Coronation, which, affect, which affectionately became known as Johnny's Place. Before long, everyone knew, him, knew Johnny. He was well-respected and well-loved, and he gave much to the community. So well-respected was he that in his later years, when he no longer wished to rise early to open his restaurant, he was able to entrust the key to a group of his regulars. They would come in and start the coffee, sitting in at their special table, Johnny would come in later and join them. Johnny and his wife, Mimi, raised a lovely family in, Bowman, in Bowmanville. His children remain in my riding, carrying on Johnny's tradition of being active in the community. They are a wonderful legacy to him, and my thoughts are very much with them at this time. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to tell you a little about, bit about Johnny Cedar, a Durham resident who will surely be missed and a great honor to our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. 
Member statements. The member from Dufferin and Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize members of the Colonel Fitzgerald Branch 233 in Orangeville as they celebrate their 80th anniversary. The Orangeville Legion has played an integral role in our community since its inception. Veterans and their families and many others are benefactors of Legion programs, outreach and support. Where, the, where there is a need in our community, our Legion and its army of volunteers is often first there to help. Legion members in Orangeville have been very busy in recent years working with local high school students to restore, repair and preserve the weathered and worn grave markers of veterans at the Forest Lawn Cemetery. This project is especially important because it ensures that the names of our fallen comrades will not be forgotten. Every time I attend a Remembrance Day service or an event at the Orangeville Legion, I'm reminded of the branch's distinguished record and outreach, especially with our students. Veterans visit local schools to discuss their experiences and participate in Remembrance services, as well as sponsoring many students through bursaries. Annually, our Legion holds a very popular speech competition for students. Members of the Colonel Fitzgerald Branch 233 have much to be proud of after eight decades of community service, but their outreach to our younger generation is particularly significant. By that outreach, our veterans are helping to preserve their stories by passing along their experiences and shared memories. Congratulations to all members, associates and volunteers of Colonel Fitzgerald Branch 233 on your significant anniversary, and thank you for your service, lest we forget. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize and celebrate the achievement of the Connect School of Languages. This school is unique, innovative, and award-winning English as second language school that is located in my riding of Trinity Spadina. Recently, the Connect School of Languages won a very prestigious award at the 2015 Digital Book Awards. Their innovative Study a Textbook series was selected as the 2015 Best Digital Textbook in Reference Academic Category at the a Digital Book Award Gala. The Study a Textbook series are a customized set of interactive English language multi-touch books which are designed for use with iPads and other tablets. The Connect School of Languages has published over 50 different digital textbooks available for students and teachers. There are eight levels of grammar, eight levels of conversation, a listening series, and a business English series. As a former English as a second language learner, I find great value in teaching and learning tools like the study it series. These language tools facilitate the use of a rich English language and culture for everyone. Delivering ESL curriculums to students in a new and innovative way is also something to be celebrated and recognized. I, along with the rest of my writing, am extremely proud of the Connect School of Languages for their hard work, commitment to cre creativity. I stand today inviting all Ontarians to celebrate this tremendous achievement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For their statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And today I rise in honour and in memory of the former Member of Parliament for Beaches Woodbine, Mr. Neil Young. Neil died this past Saturday, March 7th, at Toronto East General Hospital, a facility that he represented and championed. He was surrounded by his family and he was 78 years of age. Mr. Young was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, coincidentally the ancestral home of my own family, and he immigrated to Canada in the 1950s and worked as a machinist in the electrical industry and later became an organizer for the United Electrical Workers Union. In 1980, as a member of the New Democratic Party, Mr. Young was elected to represent the peach people of Beaches Woodbine, a precursor to the current riding of Beaches East York. He would go on to serve the riding for nearly 14 years. Maria Mina, who succeeded him, remembers Neil as a great gentleman and as a dedicated advocate for the issues he championed. Throughout his tenure as an MP, he represented several portfolios, including Pensions and Veterans Affairs, but most notable was the work he did for people with disabilities. Throughout his retirement, he continued to serve as a consultant regarding these very important matters. Neil was an avid golfer, and while he continued his good work in his retirement, he was able to find the links, find a time to hit the links every day that he could. Apparently, he was staying true to his Scottish roots. He would play rain or shine. So my sincere condolences go out to Neil's wife of 52 years, Vivian, and their children, Neil, Leslie, Mora, and Fraser. I did not know Neil, but I knew of him and that he served his community well and with, will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now